Before and they're not doing all they're doing is getting on their knees. When you walk into different churches, I've had testimony of this already that the priests have already gone into different churches. They've done their worship. People are coming over and wow, where did you learn that from? They're coming. It's like a you, you'll see it when you go to visit other churches and you start kneeling. This annoying thing is you don't even know it's falling now, it's gonna be falling tonight when you walk out of here. I'm telling you, there's gonna be something different. Now, do you see what God is showing us over here, son of man? Do you see the condition of my priests? The worship leaders are not worship leaders. Who are they leading? Who are they leading? And what are they leading? A leader is someone who leads. And if you don't lead, then you're not a leader. Wow. And if you're not worshiping, or leading, then what are you? A piano player. Or a singer. So, maybe the pastors will have to start becoming the worship leaders until God, until they teach. Until they teach the worship. They worship the job of the worship leader. And then it's transferred. But I can't. A worshiper, yes. You lead worship. And you know how to lead worship now. Because yeah. you've seen it in the house. What is it? Just on him. Is it hard? To make his house holy, is it hard? Do you have difficulty making your house holy for Hashem? Whose house is it? Him or yours? Mm. Give it to him back. When we take our crowns and put it before the altar, one of the things I want you to put on the floor is your church again and give it back to them. Say, Lord, take the church back. I want your glory. Forget the church. I don't need the building. Take it back. I want the glory. Then after the glory, do what you want with me. Yes, yes, yes. It's him now that you want. He's the he's the church. He's everything. Yes, he is. The bride and the crew. The question. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The bride and the groom. The Lord told me there had to be an anointing with the bride and the groom. And this is the reason why. When I was on the airplane, first he told me there was going to be a three-point anointing, but I didn't understand why. So, okay, fine. Then he told me on the plane, when I was sitting on the plane coming over, this is the reason why. He showed me the vision, and very, this is unbelievable as I'm talking. He showed me the way the Muslims were worshiping. Now, I didn't know this was going to happen, the way this thing worked out with the chairs. I just told my, my sister there, just take a few chairs off so we have more room. But she wound up taking all of them off. Now, after all of us, I said, my God, this is like looks like the Muslim place. So he said to me, son, you see that Satan is the best worship leader there ever was. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. He says, look how he's orchestrated the worship. Now you say, but Jack, what are you doing going into the enemy camp and trying to compare? But listen, David, I just, before the service started, I opened the book, and what do I see? David sword. And no, he's running away because he's being chased. He goes into the priest's house and says, I don't have a weapon, I don't have a weapon. One of the priests says, Goliath's sword, the one that you got. He ran to it, he take a look. There's never been anything like the sword. <laughs> I just read it when I was it's kneeling there. down. Yes, yes. Out of everything, there's nothing. There is nothing. He takes
takes a look at this, okay? <laughs> Satan saw it himself. Oh, yeah. He says, I have no weapon. What do I do? The priest says, under there, Goliath. He got excited yeah. over his head. He says, oh my God. There's never been a sword like Satan's sword. <laughs> See, the Pharisee says, "Why do you, uh, uh, why do you heal on the uh, on the, the, the Sabbath day?" He says, "Because God wants us to heal on the Sabbath. God doesn't kill what you use; just destroy the enemy." So now. God shows me, he says, look at the way the priests are bowing down and how Satan is leading the worship so magnificently. He says, son, this is the difference, though. The difference is that in their worship, they do not have love. Yes. I love. And that's the difference between our worship and their worship, so that the people, the priests, don't get confused because God said, well, I don't want to just look like a bunch of Muslims. I don't want to look... No. You're worshiping in a prostrated position mm -hmm. as the enemy does because the enemy was taught by the best yes. worship leader yes. how to prostrate yes. because Hashem told him. Hashem says to his people, do yes. not prostrate yourself before anyone. He says it over. Do not prostrate yourself. That's adultery in my sight. Yeah. It's yeah. adultery. I'm your husband. Don't. You can complain. You can do. But just don't prostrate. I cannot. I, I will not take infidelity. I can't stand it. I love you too much. Yes. I'm jealous. Allah will kill you out of jealousy. Oh, Jesus. That's who Hashem is. He's jealous. So now we got the sword. Mm -hmm. So... We take the love, which is the Songs of Solomon, and we mix the brew in with the prostration, and then you have the recipe. Ah, <laughs> you have the recipe, number one, for perfect worship. Love and position. Love and position. And the true love of God is this, that we obey His commandments. It goes like a river. And then after this perfect love comes, hallelujah, the glory will fall through the worship. But not only that, the people will get, are getting healed. First, heart-wise, turning back to God, but at the same time, the same weapon that the enemy would like to destroy us with. First in the heart, and then, David didn't stop with the heart. No, he didn't stamp on him. What he did was he literally, this is a two-fold process. The sword in the heart of the enemy, and then, why? Because you don't. The songs of Solomon. The songs of Solomon. You have to read this every day. Two reasons. Number one, so that God could put passion in him from you. And number two, so that you can start becoming passionate with your husband and wife. Again. I love it. Bride and groom. He never used examples for nothing. Why did he say bride? Because he is a groom. And we're the bride. We're the bride. Because in heaven there's no female or male. So we can be free. We don't have to get a tight Amen. Let me tell you something. You'll never find more of a man in Christ. And if he says it, let me tell you something. I want to be a man like him. I want to know why nobody has the cuts like him. Period. Let's call it like it is, okay? You tell me who has the guts of Christ. We do what he did. We used to look at Peter and Paul and all of them ran away. We probably would have ran away too. Jesus. He's a man. Not anymore. The bride and the groom. Now, you better get yourself a Tanakh. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you see the interpretation, I got witnesses for this over here. When you start reading Songs of Solomon out of Tanakh, 
I am telling you, you're going to understand what he means by loving you. Okay? Thanks a lot. I want to thank God for all these, my brothers and sisters in here who make this possible. First of all, number one, I know this is during the preaching, but it's okay. Praise God. We should give glory to God even in the middle of it. And glory to the brothers and sisters even in the middle of the preaching. Yes, number one, yes. my brothers and sisters, get the chairs off on in three minutes. Hey, man. Yes. My brother yes. just got the sword out of the way, so I'm trip on it. One who takes care of the music every time the music goes off on, just everything is done perfectly yes. according to the Holy Spirit. Hey, everything man. just to a T. Mm -hmm. Now, the songs of Solomon have something magic in them, the Word of God. It will instill passion in you. That's right. Now some of you, again, are not sitting at... Did you fall down again, or are you still sitting at the right hand here? <laughs> yeah, okay. We just want to make sure somebody didn't, by accident, tip off and just fall back down again. So come on up and sit. Now listen, you're a priest of the Most High God. You have joint seating with Christ. He says to you, do you believe his word? Yes. You have joint seating with Christ. You operate supernaturally. It's, you got to start practicing, though. The Songs of Solomon. It says, the song that excels all songs dedicated to God. And then it says, him to whom peace belongs. You don't have any yours. Him to whom peace belongs. You just touch it and you have peace. Don't you understand? You're running stressed out. I'm telling you. You have been sitting at the right hand of the Father, even with the problems. To him who is peace belongs. That's who we're related to. That's who we're related to. To him, peace belongs. How do you like that? Get the Tanakh. It's the original Hebrew. Now, Israel to God. This is Israel, the bride, speaking to God. This is us to him now. Listen. Communicate your innermost wisdom to me again in loving closeness. For your love is dearer to me than the, all the earthly belong. This bride and all the earthly delights. The love. Your love is dear to me. That's how much I desire it. Does that sound like a bride? Like the scent of goodly oils is the spreading fame of your great deeds we're talking about. Your very name is flowing oil. Listen, this is the Hebrew. Your very name is flowing oil. Did you, when we were anointing you, did you smell the oil? Yeah. Now, when you start pouring out, the snowy, we probably.